right. Uh, we're going to talk about a meeting that Ealing Council in West London is having tonight. They're going to start a process to request a public spaces protection order, a PSPO, around a Mary Stopes clinic which provides abortion services. Now, it comes after this pro-choice group, Sister Support. Uh, they got a petition together to uh, what they say is end alleged intimidation of patients outside the clinic by pro-life groups such as the Good Council Network. Now, the clinic says women are often distressed by the protesters, shouting at them, showing them distressing images. The group for uh, their defence say they only speak to women as they approach and they do not break any law. Uh, we're going to have a chat now with John Hansen Brevetti, Clinical Operations Manager at the Mary Stopes Clinic and also joined by Claire McCulloch, who is a pro-life uh, group, the Good Council Network. Um, now, John Brevetti, let's start with you. Um, what do the clients tell you is happening to them as they approach your clinic? It's something we see every day. They're coming in uh, to our doors often in tears, uh, often quite angry, that, and asking us how this is allowed to happen. Um, and they're telling us, and, and at times we witness it ourselves, that they're being blocked from entering the clinic, they're being called mum, they're being told that they'll, they'll be haunted by the ghost of their fetus, that God will punish them, they're having holy water thrown on them, they're having rosaries forced at them, teddy bears. And it's, it's incredibly disturbing to them, and it's incredibly disturbing to our staff that we're having to, to help these women through what can already be a difficult time, and this is being heaped upon them, not only as they enter, but, but as they leave the clinic as well. They're being shamed and frightened and intimidated. Um, and, and we were hearing from Julian Bell, the leader of Ealing Council, and he was saying when these reports came to him, um, they would keep a log. So is that, Sorry, you would keep a log. Is that what you've been doing, recording these events? We try to record as many as we can, as many uh, that are even over above, over and above the sort of baseline level of, of intimidation and harassment we see every day. Uh, we've kept that log at the request of police uh, because they're feeling uh, hamstrung by the, by the current legal instruments at their disposal. Uh, we need something else to, to help protect people outside our clinic from this kind of uh, emotional blackmail. For their part, uh, and we are going to be speaking to Claire McCulloch from one of these groups in a moment, they say that they haven't done that. They haven't done the things that you're suggesting. All they are doing is um, not blocking anyone's entrance, entrance, not harassing people, not intimidating them, just giving them the information, passing them a leaflet. What do you say to that? We've had reports from not only our own patients, from neighbours in the area who will phone us and say, I can see someone incredibly distressed outside your clinic. They can't get in. Can you send someone out to help them? And, and we'll send out our staff to, to usher them through. Members of uh, the local council have witnessed it themselves. Um, it's uh, something that, that everybody is in agreement is happening, that we have uh, a lot of evidence for. Um, and unfortunately, as, as members of the Home Affairs Committee pointed out in December, it appears that the, the protest groups outside are just in complete denial about the impact they're having on these women. What, why can't the police do anything? Why are you considering a public spaces protection order? Current laws uh, don't give them many options for, for how to prevent that kind of uh, behavior. And so many of them depend on, on women coming forward and, and going through a process of, of giving testimony and going to court. And understandably, it's not something that a lot of our patients want to do. They, they want to get through their day and get back to their lives. They don't want to further expose themselves. So it's very difficult for police, and we sympathize with them. <laughs> something like a public space protection order would simply create a, a buffer zone around the clinic. Uh, there's uh, The council is proposing uh, uh, an area just away from the clinic where protests could still take place. But it allows women to access the clinic unimpeded. And it's important to understand that right now, the, the, the so-called protesters, they stand directly outside our gates to the point where they can shut the gate on our clients if they wish. And, and we've seen them do that as well. Um, as, as, um, as difficult as it is for women going to your clinic, going through what is uh, a traumatic experience anyway, to be confronted with this, what about the right to peaceful protest? Um, if they aren't doing anything that, that is bordering on assault or harassment or blocking anybody's way, surely these people have a right to, to stand on the public highway and say their piece. Absolutely, and, and we support that right. Um, unfortunately, they are, they are blocking people's path and, and they are engaging in uh, what, what we think constitutes harassment. Um, but they'll, they'll tell you themselves that for them, this isn't about freedom of speech. This isn't about protests. They're determined 
to engage one-on-one -on -one directly with women approaching our clinic and forcing religious counseling on them uh, and trying to coerce them out of uh, obtaining health care that most people have made up their minds about. Okay. Um, Claire McCulloch uh, joins us now, pro-life group called Good, the Good Counsel Network. Um, and your members, Claire, campaign outside the clinic. What do you think to those allegations uh, just put before you there? We don't actually com campaign outside the clinic. We're there to offer help and support. Hundreds of women take up that help and support. John said in Parliament at the Select Committee hearing before Christmas that they have uh, CCTV footage that can only pick up things that happen on the pathway at the gate and at the doorway of the clinic clinic. So I'm wondering why he hasn't brought forth any evidence of any of these things at all. Blocking the gate never happens. These things are criminal offences, you know, harassing people, blocking their way. I, I found it interesting that he says, you know, the police have asked them to put together this log because they feel hamstrung. They feel hamstrung because there is no offence happening. And after a year and more of keeping this log, they've still not managed to find any harassment. So that's why they're trying to use the PSPO to get okay, rid of us. So you're saying women aren't shouted at? I am saying categorically women aren't shouted at. They, you don't shut the gate on them? No, we don't find that very helpful in reaching women to try and offer them alternatives. You haven't blocked their path? No. You haven't followed them up the path? Never follow them anywhere. None of what you've heard is true. What, what, what we've just heard, all the allegations, you're saying none of that happens? That's correct, and John hasn't got a scrap of evidence of any of it either. So why do you think they're getting so, so exercised about your presence then? What's, what's behind this from your point of view? Well... I mean, abortion rates are dropping at Mary Stopes in Ealing. If you look at the NHS Choices website and the reviews people give, that might give you a clue why. Um, better have a look before Mary Stopes clean that up, I think. Um, but, I mean, abortion rates are dropping. They've lost about 13% of their clientele in the last year we have figures for. And they don't know to what extent women um, are turning around because of our help. We do know that large numbers of women are turning around because of the help that's being offered because we're seeing many of them coming into our centre. Right. Uh Waving pictures of foetuses, that doesn't happen either? There are pictures of the developing baby on the ground outside the clinic. We don't wave them in anyone's face, no. And you don't think that's harassing behaviour, intimidating behaviour? As I understand it, Mary Stopes have to inform women of the developmental stage of their pregnancy and all the relevant information to their decision. I would say that if a woman is finding it upsetting to know how far her baby has developed, she's going to find that quite distressing after having an abortion Don't if it's think, hidden from her. Would she not know that before then? Because presumably before she's got to, to walk up that path to the clinic, she would know all of that. She would have weighed all that up. We heard uh, interviews with women who'd been into the clinic. Um, uh, one of our reporters went down there and spoke to them a, a short while ago saying, uh, you know, to even get to that point of walking through that gate, I've thought about all of this for a very, very long time. They don't need a pressure group giving them this information twice over. It's always been, it's been a very difficult journey to that point. I'm sure it's a difficult journey, but the, the numerous women that we see every year who are asking for help and support. Look, last week, a woman approached us as she was going in, spoke to one of our counsellors, said she'd been there three times, didn't want to have the abortion and needed a way out. Some passerby uh, came along, one of these neighbours John's talking about, saw this girl crying and, and rushed her into the clinic. Now, this girl had actually stopped to ask the counsellor for help because she felt she wasn't getting it inside. So, you know, some of this is down to people's perception of what's happening as well. I'm just saying if there were offences happening, they wouldn't need to bring in a PSPO. OK, thank you for your time. Claire McCulloch, a pro-life campaigner from the Good Council Network. You also heard from John Hanson Brevity, uh, Clinical Operations Manager at the Mary Stopes Clinic in Ealing. Uh, your views welcome on this one. They will have that council meeting tonight to discuss whether they will go forward with this uh, public spaces protection order.